Hey up, welcome or welcome back as the case may be. Now, if I were to ask you what's the ideal bike for going out into the cold, wet countryside in the middle of winter, what would your response be? And I'm guessing for most people it would go something like this. An adventure bike, a scrambler, a full dress tourer, a lightweight off-road bike. Well, uh, how about a cruiser? Now, I suspect um, a cruiser or a, a high-performance sports motorcycle will be the last two categories of motorcycle you would consider suitable to go out into the wilds in the middle of winter. But that's just what I did recently. I took my Royal Enfield Super Meteor 650 out into the hilly, sullen, wet, freezing cold Yorkshire Dales for a ride uh, round the Upper Nid Valley. And I have to say, the bike never missed a beat, not once. Not once did those uh, fabled Indian Seat tyres slip, skid, skip, or otherwise lose contact with the road surface in any way as to give me any cause for concern whatsoever. The bike performed seamlessly. Now, uh, you shouldn't dismiss a midweight cruiser as suitable for this sort of riding in this sort of terrain at this time of year. Apart from anything else, 740mm seat height means that if those tyres do give you a twitch, you can get your feet down PDQ onto the ground and recover the situation. But that never happened uh, once, not at all. I'm not suggesting for one minute that uh, you go out uh, in that sort of landscape, in that sort of weather, with a, a big heavy uh, <laughs> uh, half a ton uh, Harley Davidson. But uh, Midweight Cruiser and certainly uh, the Super Meteor uh, behaved impeccably. Very enjoyable ride indeed. In fact, um, the one thing that uh, probably makes a Super Meteor least suitable as a bike for those sort of conditions in that sort of terrain is the one thing that it actually shares in common would you believe with a BMW GS and that's weight because I think there are 1250 GS is something like uh, uh, let me see in kilograms it's 249 I believe and the Super Meteor is 241 so virtually identical but of course the Super Meteor carries its weight and center of gravity very very low indeed a very manageable bike so don't let anybody tell you you can't go out in the depths of winter on the greasy gritty slimy freezing cold roads of the Yorkshire Dales on a cruiser motorcycle because you absolutely can and uh, I hope that this next video which covers me uh, on that uh, spontaneous little ride into the Upper Nid Valley uh, goes to show that it was a seamless endeavour indeed. Yeah, so uh, sit back and uh, enjoy this beautiful winter, somewhat grey scenery in the heart of the Yorkshire Dales. And uh, please, please, please consider subscribing to the channel if you haven't already. It costs absolutely nothing. And would you believe the majority of my viewers and returning viewers for that matter are not subscribers. Please, please, please subscribe. And if you think you're already subscribed, please double check because then naughty YouTube algorithms have been out and about unsubscribing folk for a laugh. So please uh, double check that. Uh, if you're feeling particularly generous, you can click the super thanks button uh, below. And uh, otherwise, uh, sit back and uh, enjoy the video. So, uh, until the next time, take care, ride safe. See you soon. There we go, look at that. That is impressive. There's something about the way that dams, reservoirs, if you like, bisect the landscape. And although it's a bit of a... Um, you know, it's it's not the most picturesque 
or subtle of things to uh, to present itself <laughs> in the middle of the countryside but um, I think without a shadow of a doubt that dam walls particularly when the spillways are active like that are amongst the most impressive um, man-made features that you're likely to find anywhere and uh, the fact that they always find themselves of course bridging the walls of a valley for obvious reasons just seems to uh, to add to the their overall impact yeah pretty impressive stuff Forestry operations in progress, eh? Uh, sorry guys, I'm not going far, but I have viewers. Hey, <laughs> let's hope some. Uh, <laughs> let's hope some tin pot soldier in a fluorescent jacket don't come up and start lambasting me. Look at that. That is majorly impressive, so there's five spillways there and uh, the centre one there from a distance looks like it's just pale coloured concrete but it's actually faster flowing water. But uh, what a remarkable piece of engineering. On a par with Scar House I would say. Now I don't know whether that's impressive or ugly or disruptive to the overall nuances of the landscape but uh, it certainly impresses wow there's some force there anyway onwards yeah so it was um, just a spur of the moment decision I come for a ride out basically on one of my normal routes but uh, I've got my Senna sausage roll from Wiegmans in uh, in Otley and uh, I think I will partake of that up at Scar House another reservoir that's uh, two, two reservoirs together in the Nid Valley Scar House and Angram. Beautiful. Right, so this is the Upper Nid Valley and uh, it's a different proposition and a different experience entirely in winter um, as opposed to the spring or the summer but uh, no less spectacular for it. It's uh, a wild 
woolly and visceral experience and uh, I don't know if you can hear in the background something that may sound for all the world like we're on the coast uh, but it is actually Scar House Reservoir and uh, yet another spillway and uh, very choppy indeed on there a bit like the North Sea <laughs> but uh, here we are uh, in the heart of the Yorkshire Dales you can't fail to be impressed by this and it's right on my doorstep but uh, yeah it's about 3-4 degrees maximum and uh, grey and overcast as you can see but uh, as I said no less impressive for that so if you're ever in this neck of the woods get yourself up to Scar House Reservoir you can do a walk around Scar House and Angram Reservoirs if you're up to that sort of thing <laughs> yeah don't think Freddy Dobbs came up here did he Poor old Freddy. Yeah, he did the butter tubs pass, didn't he? The worst time of year in the worst weather. And then took refuge in the tenants' arms at Kilnsey Crag, it was. Right then, I think I just about got my fix for today up here. <laughs> and I'm starting to get extremely cold notwithstanding the uh, four layers that I've got on top and bottom but it is very very exposed up here uh, so well I hope you enjoyed this little uh, spontaneous ride out if you did please click a like please subscribe please feel free to share it makes all the difference in the world to me and uh, until the next time if you're riding ride safe be kind and I'll see thee